Hey, good morning, guys. Today on my commute, we're talking about uh, preparedness. Preparedness, it's this big genre. I've been living in it for a few years. Um, pretty proud of our position in it and what we've accomplished in educating people. What I've recognized in traveling all over the United States, working with different people from geographical walks of life, because it is geographical. I mean, you ask 10 people from South Carolina to walk them through a self-defense scenario versus 10 people in rural Montana, you're going to get a very different set of answers and solutions in addressing a life-threatening scenario. A lot of people in this life live in denial in so many different forms. It, it doesn't take on one form that's exclusive to preparedness or life-threatening scenarios, but a lot of people live in denial because it's the comfortable thing to do. I see a lot of people, you, you might see a lot of people who talk crap about things. Oh, look at these stupid people doing this stupid thing. But when you scratch the surface and you ask them, why are these people stupid? Or why do you not like that? They don't have a lot of good solutions. They don't have a lot of answers that are in depth and thoughtful and researched. Many people who don't like things don't like them because they don't understand them. And that's not conclusive, but it applies in a lot of ways. When I was in South Carolina, for example, when we were talking about American contingency, somebody was talking about a friend who was a tactical instructor who said, stay away from AMCON, they're bad news. Are we bad news? Uh, I, I run American contingency and I don't think it's bad news because the only thing I see is the positive things that we do, not the negative. The negative are often perceived because of our insecurities. When we don't want to learn about something, we just scratch the surface, look at the headline and go, yeah, these guys are crazy or I, I don't want to be involved in that. I mean, my group, American Contingency, has been called a militia and we're far from that. I've even had CNN journalists interview me and scratch the surface and look very deep into the organization and realize that, oh, we're not as controversial as they thought, wouldn't be a good story, so let's not run that one. And that's super problematic in disabling your ability to grow. Because if you want to grow as, as a person or professionally, you have to be willing and open-minded to new thoughts, new ideas, and maybe new experiences. So in preparedness, people who don't understand it think it's paranoia. I mean, I, I, I read this, um, this book recently because I heard this guy on the Joe Rogan podcast. I didn't read it. I listened to it on an audio book about this guy who wrote multiple stories and chapters about people who are preppers. And, you know, him and Joe laughed about it and it was a thing because it's like, yeah, they're paranoid and often it's the crazy fringe people of our society. But why does it have to be? I started Philcraft Survival based on the understanding of how important preparation was in conducting the most dangerous offensive operations and counterterrorism on the planet. You take 20 special operations operators from any line of service and go conduct a raid against the most dangerous human beings on the planet. And then you walk away unscathed where all the bad guys die and all the good guys live. And you have to ask yourself, why did that take place? Like, why did that happen? And the reason it happened is because the attention to detail and planning and rehearsals and specific equipment for the operation and logistical service and support. All the things that make special operations great come from a line of preparation and being prepared for the worst case scenario. That's called contingency based planning where you plan for things to go wrong, not go right. So I ask people all the time because people think my company is about tactical training, 
It's not. In fact, next year uh, with Amber, we have a family preparedness program that we're launching that has to do with everything about your family and preparing your children, your spouse, and how in a collective that you would organize and communicate to be better prepared. So I, I tell people, hey, 30 to 40,000 people a year die in vehicle accidents every single year. Um, millions of people die uh, every single year from the combination of cardiovascular disease. Um, including cancer and um, heart attacks and strokes and diabetes and all these compounding issues. So when I look at your health and fitness, that was the baseline foundation for me as a special operations guy to be successful. If I didn't have a foundation of fitness and things went wrong, uh, even when things were just right, I would be compromising the people around me, the men around me, that depended on me to save their ass. As I think you should look at yourself amongst your family, friends, and even community. So if you're driving down the road right now listening to me, and you're not an asset to your family who's maybe in your car, or maybe not in your car, the community outside your car, and you come upon an accident, or you're in an accident, to me, your individual responsibility should be able to address as a value add and, a, and an asset the things that are happening in real time, not depending on first responders who are 12, 15 minutes and sometimes um, not even coming. So what do you do when you get in a, in a vehicle accident, you roll upside down and you're bleeding out of your femoral artery, out of your leg and your, your spouse is sitting next to you? What are you gonna do? So are you going to bleed to death because you don't have a solution? Or are you gonna face reality outside of denial, grow a little bit, realize that $29.99 is how much a turning it costs, an hour of your time is how long it takes to train, and then implementing that in your life will set you up for success, not failure. When I talk about survival seminars, one thing I highlight is the Virginia Tech shooting. And a large percent of the victims of the Virginia Tech shooting, which is beyond 30 casualties that were killed in that tragic mass shooting, a large percentage of them were shot and killed with gunshots to the head, which means he was executing people one by one with a semi-automatic handgun. And, I, you know, it's a tragic circumstance, but I'm looking at the circumstance to take away something that's gonna benefit people to make them more aware or to, to implement change in their lives and preparedness. At what point do you think the people that were taking it in the back of the head woke up and realized that the circumstance they were in was real? That they had to do something on their own as an individual in order to save their lives? And when did that realization come about? And what time period was it determined that it was too late? Was it when the guy next to the person was shot and killed? Was it when the gun was pressed against their back of their head? Look, you are your own first response. You have to be responsible for taking care of yourself and your family in your own way. And there are better practices, there are better methods in these tactics, techniques, and procedures that are gonna set you up for success. This isn't a scary thing. Because when you take all the doubt out of your life in preparedness, when you answer the questions that you maybe didn't even ask yourself or think to ask yourself, all the paranoia goes away. And you replace that denial with self-confidence. I, I see a lot of insecurity in American society. I, I see a lot of people desperate for answers without even understanding what, what the question is. They want the answer, don't even know what the question is, and they feel this anxiety. Here are some questions. What are you gonna do when nobody is there to protect you and you have to defend your life against evil, against somebody hell-bent on hurting you, on killing you and your family? What are you gonna do? 
how are you going to protect yourself and how are you going to protect your family? Here's another question. If a natural disaster grossly affects you, a tornado, a hurricane, a flood, an earthquake, name the natural disaster, are you prepared prepared to sustain your survivability in the instant and the long-term gross effects outside of depending on FEMA or a first responder, uh, responder on saving your ass? Here's a question. Right now, if somebody kicked in your door in your home with your family present, maybe without you being there, with your family present, with your kids present, do you have a plan? It's not that difficult. If the if the answer for you is, oh, I don't need to worry about that shit. It just, it just whatever. That The likelihood of that happening, it's never going to happen. Never say never, my friend. I, I've been living in that world my entire life. Never say never because I've seen it all. Instead, be realistic and stop denying the realities of the world that we live in. What happens right now when you're in a vehicle accident and you're rolled upside down fighting for your life and you don't have any solutions? You don't know how to cut yourself out of your seatbelt. You don't know how to apply a tourniquet. You don't have a tourniquet. You never trained. You never thought about it. Selfishly or selflessly, when thinking about your family, think about that. What happens you're in that vehicle? It's not you bleeding out, it's your family bleeding out. What's your solution? I've seen it time and time again, where people have thanked us as a company, thanked me personally and saying, thank you for turning us on to preparedness and survival, because this idea made us become better prepared in training and equipment, and we had a solution when things went wrong. And if we didn't seek that because we were living in denial, then that circumstance, which we faced in reality, would have turned a different way and we might not be here or our family might not be here to talk about it. Preparedness is so important in your life. And this isn't a marketing campaign because we can't offer all the solutions in preparedness. I I want to, but we can't. So I'm gonna point you in the right direction of people who are going to help you be better prepared. You know, I've been asked before, Mike, why do you work and promote other tactical training companies? In in looking at tactic, uh, tactics and self-defense, you know, it, it goes on and on. Well, it's because I believe in consumer choices because I do the same. I have multiple guns for EDC, multiple holsters, I I train with multiple people in special operations. So I think it's beneficial for you to look at the gambit of survival and preparedness. And I have a Rolodex of great people who are doing great things that will make you better at all this stuff that I'm talking about. Guys, I hope that helps. It's a long conversation. Um, I'm past the window of your optimized attention span. Maybe uh, if you give a shit about the message, you've hung on this long. I hope you guys have a good day. Uh, and look forward to doing these more often. If you're trying to get into preparedness, the start point, I have a podcast, the Philcraft Survival Podcast, the Mike Force, Mike Force Podcast. That's all about mindset and preparedness. Listen to those podcasts and learn something. Thanks, guys. Have a good day.